OK, let's move on now because we're going to turn to the gender gap problem. And there's a growing understanding that the right way to address the challenge is through community effort and narratives built around personal experiences. Well, to provide some of these narratives, we're joined by Alona Lamash, uh, Director and Head of Risk Management Practice at Exact Pro, and Florence Fontan, Head of Company Engagement and General Secretary at BMP Pariba Securities. OK, it's good to see both of you. Alona, let me start first with you. Very basic question, but in your opinion, is enough being done to increase diversity and inclusion in the fintech industry? Hello, thank you for inviting me first. Uh, speaking of diversity and inclusion, what is crucial to me is uh, that uh, to understand that numbers, the exact proportion of female versus male uh, workforce is probably not the key. Uh, the problem as I see it is more associated with cognitive biases. Objectively speaking, uh, cognitive biases are important mechanisms that we evolved in us humans uh, that allows to process large amounts of information about the world more effectively. Uh, but uh, forming judgments based on the qualities of uh, a group rather than individual ones is destructive, maybe destructive for both society and for business. So there are two implications that seem important uh, to me. First, I agree with the problem that has been already articulated by many voices in the industry. When we're thinking about women as a group possessing or lacking certain qualities, we risk losing strong professional talent. But there is also another implication, which is ironically the opposite side. Um, when we do recognize a woman's achievements, but at the same time mark her as a part of the gender group, that actually may blur the accomplishment itself. Well, so actually, so sorry. oh no, sorry. I, this is one of one of the little faux pas we have. Uh, was beaming in is the art interruption. Uh, please, please finish your your thought, Alona. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's not uncommon in present days to hear some people speak of female uh, leadership appointments as a diversity hires. So, which definitely tells that as a society, we still need to put some effort. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, I'd like to actually put the, the same question, if I may, uh, to you, Florence. Um, from a banking perspective, uh, do you think enough is being done to increase diversity and inclusion in fintech? So, I mean, uh, let me speak about the financial industry in general. I think, um, for me, gender diversity is now a no-brainer for everyone. I mean, it's uh, women represent half of the world's population. And, um, and I think there are plenty of studies that diversity in general, including gender diversity, contribute to a better performance for a company in general. So there's no differences in banking uh, in, in that respect. So I think we should do, we should go uh, even further to collectively ensure the right conditions for all women to be able to leverage their skills and uh, um, talent and creativity into the banking and the financial industry. And I think a lot is being done now in diversity. Um, there's a lot of focus in our financial industry right now we should do we are more open more flexible i think uh, also uh, the the flexibility that we have also experienced recently with the uh, pandemic etc has reinforced somehow the ability to realize that we can be even more flexible in our industry than what we initially sold um, but i think diversity cannot be just a, a one-time campaign it has to be a continuous work that uh, that we all need to to do. Um, and, and I think here, uh, if I look at BNP Paribas, I mean, uh, being a truly global has uh, uh, enabled us to really embark diversity in terms of background, nationalities, um, but we can do even more and notably on gender diversity. Let, let's stay with that point, Alona, because look, clearly this is a big subject. It's not something which is going to happen overnight. It's a continuous journey. But given that, do you see any particular way to address the situation or, or the gender gap? Can there be one specific way? 
I don't think that there is one specific way that's that's true. But I do believe that knowledge sharing and education could give more possibilities to young people to develop and grow in all professional areas. And even those traditionally dominated by males, such as financial services and uh, information technology. Uh, another way to work towards closing the gap, uh, I believe, is through the community initiatives. So. Uh, Women of Cybos event is what we have today is one of the examples and through the personal examples that uh, empower women to master new skills, to take more responsibility. I feel that more voices and more narratives will eventually drive that change. Uh, what's your view here, uh, Florence? Uh, what would you like to see done to tackle the gender gap? I think there's not uh, one single bullet, otherwise we would have used it. Uh, but it's a conjunction of different actions that we need to we need to put. First, I think we have all um, a role to play in that respect. And I was as a leader myself, and uh, uh, I found as an opportunity, but also as a responsibility to use uh, my position to offer opportunity to others and to increase that diversity. So I think here and everyone can do that, okay, men, women, whoever is in, in a position of decision and is hiring, is recruiting, should have that in mind and can do this. So that is a simple step that everyone can do. The second is indeed as an organization, uh, we need to make sure that the HR process, whether it's uh, mobility, recruitment, training, et cetera, is taking into account the gender balance. And so you need to have a I would say transparent process, making sure that we can uh, fact-based decision-making, et cetera. So that's also an important element. Because it's true that, and I think Eloa mentioned it before, there's a lot of unconscious bias that, that is there. And we need to fight against that as an organization. And as in, in here, I think there is a number of training program. And here in our organization, we have also developed those training programs to ask uh, notably uh, uh, our people that are massively recruiting in the different areas to uh, go through those trainings to be aware of their own conscious base to, to make sure that they are not uh, taking that too much of importance. But I think one important step for me um, that could make a difference is we need to build and to have visible and inspirational role model because in, in diverse, in a large variety of, of roles model, because it's true that when a woman, including young, young junior or leaders or young female, um, uh, if they can see that you have women in senior position that have a, that can play the role model, they are really um, they can identify themselves, and so they can speak up, they can f look forward, and they can build and even um, I would say unconsciously build their own career to say, okay, it is possible. And also our men colleagues realize that, oh, you know what? Women can do that too. So they also realize that this is possible and you can do it. And I think this is absolutely critical. So you need to make those women, I mean, those role model a large variety because people and women are different as well. You don't have one single format of women. So they need to, they need to be able to see themselves in different role, in different position, and you need to have a variety of them to succeed in having them looking forward and seeing that they have a potential career within your organization, that it is possible, and, and then you make it possible directly. Mm -hmm. So, and I think, you know, at BNP Paiva, when, when our group CEO um, changed the Comex back in February and announced that we he wants a target of 40% of women at the group, so the BNP Paribas Group Executive Committee and within the top 100 senior leaders, I think that will is a sign that diversity is taken seriously from the top. But it means as well that by 2025, we are going to have 40 very senior role model in the organization that a lot of women can identify themselves into. So I think this is really uh, a concrete actions that I encourage everyone to, to really develop because I, for me, this is what works well.
Mm. Alona, I can see you nodding in agreement with, with that answer. Let's bring it a little bit closer to home. What role are women playing at Exapro, the company where you work? And what do you think has really shaped, influenced the corporate culture? A woman plays significant, significant role at Exapro. Uh, actually, our key revenue generating Division, divisions, um, the one responsible for testing services that we provide in global exchanges, and another one covering all the distributed ledger technologies testing. They are led by women. Another example is uh, our internal project, where one is, uh, the one which is focused on the development of um, Exact Pro's core technology, the next our next gen test automation platform called TX2, is also driven by female leader. Um, and most importantly, this actually happened organically, and all these ladies, they have joined Exact Pro in junior roles. So. Looking back at the first days of ZACPRO, I remember being among the founding team, uh, both men and women. And what was important at that point is that I saw strong professionals who shared incredible workload and responsibilities when building the company from the ground. And I felt that I could, I could rely on my female colleagues as well as on male colleagues. Um, so it was true for both expertise and leadership skills. So uh, this created the right context, allowing people grow at exact pro professionally, uh, surrounded by the role models of both genders. So as uh, as um, Florence just said, that the role models is really important part of this uh, process, I would say. And these first weeks and months of our company, that make me believe that when you create new context, when you create that professional experience of equally skilled and equally recognized women and men, that actually is the right way to drive change. Well, I'm very glad to say we have our own skilled female leader here at Cybos TV, Ian Juliet Foster, who I've been following the lead of all week and will continue to do so. Uh, but it's been fantastic to speak to both of you ladies today here. Uh, Alona Lamash, Director and Head of Risk Management Practice at Exact Pro, and Florence Fontan, Head of Company Engagement and General Secretary at BMP Paribas Securities Services. Thank you very much.